We'll be continuing in our study in Romans. Lord willing, we'll look at verses 20 and 21 of chapter 1 today. Romans chapter 1, verses 20 and 21, if you recall from last week, we were talking about righteousness in Christ and then how they, the wrath of God will be against the ungodly. And he begins in verse 19 to tell how he shows himself to his creation. In verse 20 and 21, he elaborates more on that. <clears throat> Romans chapter 1, verse 24 writes, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, either were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Here, Paul began by saying that the invisible things of him, or of God, from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Mm -hmm. In short, that God reveals himself to us through his creation. But we see a few ways that he is revealed in his characteristics. Let's turn back to Jeremiah chapter 10 for just a moment. Jeremiah chapter 10 verse number 12. No, we're not talking about Christmas trees here, but that is in the earlier part of the chapter. But continuing on this thought of idolatry and comparing to the to Jehovah God, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Speaking of God, he says, He hath made the earth by his power, he hath established the world by his wisdom, and he and hath stretched out the heavens by his discretion. Amen. Or that for discretion it means his, his understanding, his intelligence, his skill. But well, we see he, his power, his wisdom, and this discretion, as it's called here, are all displayed in creation. Mm -hmm. We see over in chapter 3 of Proverbs, we can turn there, we see this same thought brought out. I'd like for us to look at a few places here in, in Psalms as well. Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 19 and 20. Here the writer says, The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth, by understanding, that the same word as discretion, by the way, hath he established the heavens. By his knowledge the depths are broken up, and the clouds drop down the dew. Man. <laughs> it was... God in his infinite wisdom and power has created this earth and his, his I guess we could describe it as intelligence, his skill that is beyond our comprehension that Amen. he has set all these things in place and we can clearly see them in creation and yet man denies those things. Right. We can turn back to Psalms chapter 33. Here we are just cons considering God as creator God. There's <coughs> multiple aspects to God and who he is, but just as creator, he has revealed himself to his creation. Verse check, excuse me, verse 6 of chapter 33 of Psalm says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Those verse 9 as well, for he spake and it was done, he commanded and it stood fast. Amen. And God just spoke in this world came into <coughs> existence. And there was no Big Bang or any of these other theories that right. When God said, Let there be light, there was light. And here you go. And it says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. You can be sure that it was in the beginning that God created the heavens and the earth. And it was just that he spoke and it came into existence. That is the power of God Jehovah. Mm -hmm. Yet man in his 
depravity and his wickedness tries to explain it away in some other way. Right. We turn back to chapter 19 of the Psalms. We see also that his glory is revealed through creation. Psalms 19 verse 1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, the firmament showeth his handiwork. Amen. We'll come back to the psalm later, but just through these scriptures we see that God has revealed him as his glory, his wisdom, his power, his knowledge and understanding all through his creation. Yet man denies even the existence of those things. Mm -hmm. But we see at least throughout all of history, that man has recognized that there is a God. Mm -hmm. And yet man today wants to deny that there is a God. He's, I don't think man is any more wicked than he ever was, but yet man is farther and farther away from God than he ever right. has been. Let's turn back to chapter 8 of Psalms. We'll look at one more place here. Psalm 8. Verses 3 and 4, David writing, he says, When I considered the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon, the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, the son of man that thou visitest him? And if we ever just stop and consider the vastness of creation, which mm -hmm. I know I called on several months back about just what man knows about the universe and how vast it is, yet how so small and insignificant we as a planet are, and even less as a people are, and yet out of all that he's created, he cares for his people. Amen. David just looks out and considers all that around him, and he says, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and son of man that thou visitest him? Mm -hmm. A man really thinks he's something, and yet in comparison, we are very little or nothing. Right. That it should be a, a humbling thought to consider that God would care for us, that He would bestow any goodness upon us. To mm -hmm. think about all that is out there in the universe around us, and yet He placed this planet just in the right spot for life to occur and for all the things to be in motion that keep life and that sustain this world, and yet man denies that there is even a God. They right. They'd rather say it happened by accident or chance. But now the modern thing is they're looking for life in other places. <laughs> if you could get past into the universe to where the third heaven is, then yeah, you could find life there. But <laughs> man can search all of this creation he wants to, and I don't believe he's going to find life anywhere else but you're right here where God has placed it and yet we see all of this that God has done in creation and yet man still doesn't believe in him right man I acknowledge that there is a God but they don't truly believe in the God right that's the argument that Paul is making here, that God has revealed himself through his creation, and yet man still in his wickedness denies him. Mm -hmm. We go back to our text in Romans. Romans chapter 1, verse 20, he says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Since creation and through nature itself, the he says these things are clearly seen, that the attributes of God are evident in these things. Mm -hmm. you know, all those things we looked at, they're very <coughs> evident in creation, that, that there is a creator God, that just the fact that there is order and laws that govern our creation, mm -hmm. point that there is a God. Amen. But yet man in his foolishness says that out of chaos came order, and out of non-life came life and <laughs> other such things like that. As we'll see, it's because their hearts have been blinded. Right. No, he says that they're clearly seen being understood by the things that are made. That is the 
the intangible attributes of God are seen by the tangible things of this world. And we cannot physically see his characteristics, but we can see the evidence of it. Amen. And yet, once again, man in his wickedness and depravity wants to deny those things or wants to explain them away by physical means. Right. You know, if you've ever actually studied it very much, they're always changing their theories and thoughts. Right. Exactly. Because you cannot explain the things of God in a physical manner. Amen. Just like the original creation of the earth to begin with, that cannot be explained away by physical means. The flood of Noah's day, that cannot be explained by just mere physical understanding of things. Right. But there is evidence of both of those, not just in the Word of God, but in nature itself. That's it. Your wife thought it interesting, you know. There was a Anglican bishop, his name was James Usher, I believe. He, back in the, I want to say 1700s, studied out the timeline of creation and came to a date of 4004 BC based on the timelines in the Bible versus known dates of history that we have. Actually, he came to the conclusion that today, October 23rd, was the date of creation. <laughs> I don't know if we can pinpoint that close or not, but we can be sure it was about 6,000 years ago, not millions or billions. Hey, man. I don't know, they might be up to trillions of years by now. That's because man's theories must have these large amounts of time for them to actually even be somewhat plausible. Mm -hmm. Yet even a study of history shows that man hasn't been around that long. Amen. Going back to our text here, he says, well, they are clearly seen to be understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. These two attributes of God, the, the enduring power of God and the divine nature of God are the two things that Paul points to that are very evident in nature and creation. And he said those two things alone should be enough that man would recognize God. Right. But they're so evident they are really without disputes. Well, they're so clear in creation that only a fool would say there is no God. Right. Which is exactly what Psalm has said in Psalms 14 and Psalms 53. Yeah. The fool will say in his heart, there is no God. Mm -hmm. so knowledge and understanding will lead one to see God, not know God, but they will understand that there is a God. Amen. It says, so that, the, so that they are without excuse, that man will not be able to claim ignorance when they stand before God. They will not be able to say, well, I didn't know you, God, or you didn't reveal yourself to me, because he very clearly has said through nature itself. Amen. Let's turn back to Psalm 19. We see this here, that there is none that have been without ex exposure to the evidence of God. We'll go ahead and read verse 1 again. On through verse 6, it says, the heavens declare the glory of God, and firmament showeth his handiwork. Day and night utter his speech, and night and night showeth knowledge. Mm -hmm. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words and end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the earth, or end of the heaven, and a circuit under the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. He says there's no speech nor language. He says we're speaking of the elements of creation that their voice is not heard. That he says their light going out through all the earth. The sun has shined upon all that it had. 
There will not be any, even in the farthest remote region of the world, that will be able to stand before God and say, well, I didn't know there was a God. Mm-hmm. They just... The people of quote ancient times, they knew that there was a God. They worshiped right. a God of sorts. If you go to said even remote villages today in the island, you'll find that they are worshiping a God of some sort. Mm-hmm. It's very evident in creation that there is a God. God has revealed himself this way to all of his creation, yet said it's through their through our wickedness that we have denied his existence, Mm -hmm. denied his being, denied who he is. And it's really through man's foolishness that he has come to the conclusion that there is no God. You can be sure they will be without excuse. Every last one of them will stand before him without excuse. Every last one will Bow the knee, confess that Christ is Lord. One day. Amen. But at that point, it will be too late for saving faith. Right. Well, it's not. Some people say, well, it's unfair that the Native Americans or the remote villages in Africa, or such as the natives down in Guyana, they that they've never heard the gospel. I say, well, God. Is pleased to reveal the gospel to, we, to whom he wishes, but he Amen. revealed himself to all of his creation. Amen. So none are without excuse. Let's go back to our text in verse 21 now. Here he says, because that, telling why they were without excuse, because that when they knew God, that is, they not that they knew God intimately, but they knew of God, they knew him intellectually and were consciously aware of God. He said all of mankind in his conscience knows there is a God. Mm-hmm. Even the atheist who doesn't want to admit it knows there is a God and will worship some sort of God, whether he calls right. it a God or not. Maybe the God in the form of money or possessions or sometimes even self-worship. Mm-hmm. He says they glorified him not as God. Man by nature does not glorify God, either in word or in thought. The man does not give the honor and praise that is due unto God, naturally. Man does not ascribe to God the things that are belong to him, his characteristics, his attributes. <laughs> But oftentimes man gives those things to nature itself or even to themselves. Right. One the one that aggravates me the most is Mother Nature. <laughs> right. There's no such thing as Mother Nature. God's in it. control of the sun, the moon, the rain, the stars. In fact, Christ himself said he sends rain on just and unjust and causes the sun to shine on the good and the evil. To be sure it is God who controls even the weather. Mm-hmm. Let's turn back to Psalms 29. <laughs> Thank you. Even sometimes we, as his people, don't give him glory like we ought to. But you're right. Psalms 29 is a very good example of giving God the glory. We'll, just, we'll go ahead and read all 11 verses here. Here David, once again, is writing, he says, Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty, give unto the Lord glory and strength, give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Amen. Worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. God doesn't necessarily need us to give him his glory, but we really are bound to give him his glory. He is, Amen. He is worthy of such. If he is glorious, whether we glorify him or not. But it is our duty to Ascribe that glory to him. Mm-hmm. Going on verse 3, it says, The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God, the God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. Yea, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. He maketh them also to skip like a calf. Lebanon and Syrian like a young unicorn. 
The voice of the Lord divided the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. The Lord shaketh the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord maketh the hinds to calve and discovereth the forest. In his temple doth every one speak of his glory. The Lord said upon the flood, yea, the Lord said, King forever. The Lord will strengthen unto, or give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. That is giving glory to God. Amen. What we as his creation, even more so as his people, how we ought to give glory to him. Mm -hmm. That we would give him honor and praise for who he is and just how he is mighty and powerful and all the good he has done to us and all that he is able to do. In heaven, that's how we will be. We will be forever praising him, glorifying him. Amen. In fact, we see a scene of that in Revelation. I didn't write it down, but I think it's in Revelation 4. And they're around the throne and they said, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to see glory and honor and power and strength. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Amen. And we, as his creation, were created. I'd say first and foremost to bring glory and honor and praise to him. Amen. Yet man, through the fall and through sinful corruption, has corrupted that. We rather, excuse me, we seek our own glory rather than the glory of God. Right. But it is the duty of every man to give glory unto the Lord. <coughs> so it says they knew God, yet they glorified him not as God. They knew mm -hmm. who he was. Man understands that there is a God, but. I'd say to some degree that he is powerful. Maybe mm -hmm. we don't understand him as the all sovereign of the universe. But yet even knowing a natural understanding of God, they don't glorify him as God. Right. And it says, neither were thankful. Man by nature does not give little thanks to God, does he? Mm -mm. The right attitude towards God is both to glorify him for who he is and also to thank him for who he is. A man might sometimes acknowledge that God is God or that God is powerful, that God is mighty. But how often do we, even as his people, thank him that he, are, he is these things? Right. Let's turn over to Revelation and we'll see. Here are the four and twenty elders in Revelation. Give him thanks for who he is. Revelation 11, verses 16 and 17. Here we see this scene in heaven after the, I think it's the seventh trumpet has sounded, verse 15, and it says that Christ would reign forever and ever. In verse 16 it says, And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshiped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and was and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. Not only did they give him glory, but they also thanked God that he is the Almighty, that he is the one which was and is and is to come. Mm -hmm. That he is really Jehovah, that's what Jehovah means, that he is the self-existent one. Really was and is and is to come is the best way we can describe it. Mm -hmm. God is outside of even that. Right. And it says they thanked him because he has taken to thee thy great power and has reigned. Because God reigns, they were thankful to him. Because he was powerful, they were thankful to him. Do we ever just stop and thank God for who he is? A man by nature doesn't do that. Actually, man by nature oftentimes curses God, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Right. So when I think of a little, I guess it's a nursery rhyme we learned as a kid. But it's really a mockery against God. It's rain, rain, go away, come again some other day. Mm -hmm. We we say that jokingly, but yet we, if we're not careful, and definitely the wicked of the world, they will complain against God and the things mm -hmm. of God. 
Yet we should, because it's just who he is, we should give him thanks for who he is. That's right. Certainly when he does good to us, we can thank him. Certainly when we see his blessings, we can thank him. Just because God is God, we should be thankful to him. Yet man will not do that by nature, because he has been hardened in heart, as we'll see in the last part of this verse here. But going on back in our text, it says, They neither were thankful, but they became vain in their imagination, and their full of hearts were darkened. They became vain in their imagination. He says that their thoughts were void of anything good. Maybe their thoughts were foolish and wickedness. And that is the natural state of man. That their mm -hmm. thoughts are against God. Their thoughts are wickedness. That there's, I don't think you'll find anywhere in the scripture where there's a little bit of good in man. He just has to act upon them. Exactly. But over and over again, man is wicked even in his thoughts. Mm -hmm. You can turn back to Genesis and see this. Genesis, if we all know chapter 6, verse 5, where the man looked down and saw that the, even the imagination of thoughts of him, the man was evil continually. All right, God said so he was going to destroy the earth. But Genesis chapter 8, after the flood, man, nature hadn't changed. Right. That God destroyed all but Noah and his family and the animals that were on the ark. You know, if it had not been for grace, he would have just destroyed everything. <laughs> Chapter 8, verse 20 and 21. After the water had subsided and Noah and his family came out of the ark, it says in verse 20, and Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast of every clean fowl and offer for an offering on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. The Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I have done. See, God was pleased with the sacrifice of Noah. And mm -hmm. the, Today he is pleased with the sacrifice of his son, but you can see that the nature of man is still the same. Though. Right. The imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. We won't get into discussions about the age of accountability and such, but it's very evident from an early age that man is wicked. Exactly. That man's nature is corrupt. And that Depravity, which is in him, only comes out more and more, except for the grace of God in him. Mm -hmm. Yet man knows there is a God, and yet he still sins against him. Yet he is still wicked in his thoughts against him. And just as he was in Noah's day, man is still wicked just as much today. Man has not gotten better and better as time has gone on. Right. Anything the scriptures say, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Well, their foolish hearts were darkened. Here is the key really to all of it, I think. That they have no real understanding of God, that they have been blinded, they're in darkness. So they know there is God, but they don't have a right understanding of who he is. So we have his word to reveal, reveal him unto us mm -hmm. through understanding given to us by the Spirit that he births us anew and gives us a real understanding of who he is and we can learn more and more about him. But yet man by nature knows there is a God, but, his, but sin has darkened his heart. Right. Let's turn to Galatians and we'll close. Galatians chapter 4. Galatians 4. Oh, got the wrong scripture over down here. Maybe it's a
to where I'm supposed to go to, but anyway, it just tells us again that man in that state has been corrupted and blinded by sin. Mm -hmm. And yet man still will be without excuse because he knows that there is a God. Amen. Man will not be able to stand before God and plead ignorance or think. Say, well, God, you were sovereign. What can I do about that? <laughs> right. Because God has revealed himself through nature to his creation. We are bound to give him glory and give him thanks for who he is. Amen. And man, through his corrupt nature, has, does not do those things. Has no intent on doing those things until God bursts him anew. He <laughs> gives a new nature, a new... I guess you can say a new view of him, mm -hmm. a right understanding of him. Exactly. <laughs> Lord willing, next week we'll continue on in this. But he goes on in more detail how the man has become corrupt in his nature. And really turn the, cr the created thing into like unto God himself. Basically, idol idolatry is what it boils down to. Yeah, you can be sure man is not going to get better on his own. Man is not you know, sick in need of a hospital. Man is not right. leaned over on a crutch and, or walking with a cane or anything like that. Man is completely blind and darkened in sin. I mean, unless God gives them that spiritual life that will continue in such. Exactly. Even though he has clearly revealed himself through creation itself. Well, this wasn't the topic of our text, but sometimes just stop and consider God is creator of God and how great he is in that. It's an overwhelming thought for the child of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. And he is a great and almighty God, just in that aspect, and certainly in many more as well. Let's go ahead and close with that thought. Amen.